Greetings everyone and welcome back to Cosmetia and to the Scarab. Now before we get down to business today, I do want to give you a quick forward because you may notice some audio shenanigans in the background. Hopefully my, uh, my setup will filter out any noise or if not i'll be able to uh, to cut it out in post-production but there is some construction works going on outside my house so if you do notice any audio weirdness potentially a wobble where noise filtering is kicking in uh, that is most likely what it is but with that said and done Hello to the sky. I wanted to kick things off with a small update. Uh, shout out goes to Ben Kuri, I believe I'm, uh, that's how I would pronounce your surname, and Gunrunner, which is a hilariously relevant uh, name considering the comment. And that was that given the small size of an ammo factory and the large production of ammo per sulfur, it may be more effective than having large stocks of ammo to instead store sulfur on the ship and have an ammo factory. Now, if we have a look at the uh, the ammo factory itself, sulfur capacity is 5, ammo capacity is 20, but it uses 0 0.05 sulfur per ammo. In one second, it can produce 2 units of ammo, and it will consume 0 0.1 units of sulfur, which... Considering the uh, the stacks, and this is actually a really, really convenient way of seeing how much can go into a stack. Uh, I mean, you can sort of visually see that it's five per stack, but we can see that this is an entire stack of sulfur. There is five, and an entire stack of ammo is 20, based on the capacity of the room itself, which uh, I, I thought was uh, kind of funny. Uh, now, not all factories have that kind of a, a great conversion ratio. For example, over here, it's one iron to one steel plate but uh, the plates stack significantly better than the iron. So looking at that, it is much better to just store the finished product rather than the uh, input resource. But that is not the case with sulfur. Sulfur is a bit of a special case. So with that said, let's get in here and change things around a little bit. We're going to want a sulfur factory. Uh, rather, a, uh, a ammo factory. I guess we could have a sulfur factory too. Uh, let's pop that there, though, uh, as I would like a little bit more dedicated storage, especially for batteries and the likes. And we could have the uh, sulfur then just down here. Come in here, grab the sulfur, load it in, take the ammo out. I think that would work quite nicely. Uh, then we could have perhaps storage for batteries. We could have this larger storage for then for anything else if we particularly wanted it uh at this stage we could have the uh the uh shunt the airlock hatches down here if we really really wanted to have something to put here to make this space make sense uh and i kind of like it it's not really necessary but we'll we'll add that in anyway right so there we go make it so pomp now what we want to do next is to very specifically say that hey this should only ever be sulfur and furthermore this should feed straight into uh here and then this should feed directly into these there we go that's everything we need uh next up i'm going to want to say this we could just say hey this entire spot here that's purely for hyperium that's my battery storage uh other than that whatever uh we'll we'll store whatever we need in in the other spaces and that should take care of everything so that was a that was a really good bit of uh of advice there hopefully that's going to allow us to have quite a large stockpile of ammo and um you know potential ammo on the scarab directly so thank you very much for that advice uh, that will uh, hopefully be something we'll carry forward as well onto any other ships that might use ammo we'll we'll try to have an ammo factory unless they have a very very small throughput of ammo but uh, i've i've received many warnings that the flag batteries can be a little ammo hungry so this seems to make sense now, next up, we have got small thrusters, something I touched on in the last episode. Uh, thanks again to LB Stump for drawing attention to this. But smaller the thruster, the faster its reaction time. So for combat maneuvers, it makes a lot more sense to have very small thrusters that react very quickly to allow me to turn the ship. Now, I do want the medium thrusters, uh, or rather the large thrusters in this case, to exist for that extra oomph. But I want a small thruster 
Oh, well, I say small, but realistically for this ship, I'm, I'm thinking more standard thrusters rather than the very small ones, uh, to help me get the movement happening straight away. Now, where am I going to position these is a little bit more of a tricky ask. I'm thinking we could have some small thrusters maybe embedded up here, and then these can be just more dedicated uh, big push lateral thrusters, and also some small thrusters somewhere around the the uh, engine room to help me initially react to changes of of course so give me a moment we're gonna have to try and carefully surgically peel the ship away all right there we are now it's gonna take a while for our crew to reload everything because sadly uh yeah everything is all over the place uh, currently whilst uh, they're having to rejig things because i've moved around so many systems and it really is a shame that when you move a system it completely loses all of its charge or indeed all of its ammo but thankfully the ammo does tend to get uh, stowed rather than lost completely but it's going to take a little bit of time for our crew to get everything back to where it's meant to be but uh, the changes in general uh, because it was actually quite finicky with the the cut tool so i'll probably cut that out uh we've got the capacitor over here is now also responsible for charging up this small uh, standard thruster i have lost two small uh, sorry two large thrusters for forward and backwards so we are going to see a change in our max speed in both directions but we are going to have a bit of a faster reaction time especially over here where we've got two uh so reverse has got two standard thrusters whereas forward has only got one standard thruster because generally speaking if we're moving forward we're probably going for a longer journey whereas uh, moving backward and changing direction those are more combat maneuvers now i am really tempted to have a uh, an extra thruster down here but i didn't want to cut off connection to these uh these uh, point defenses just yet. I'm still trying to think of the right way to connect all of that up. Now, I'm sure I've missed out on something, but hopefully it won't be anything too too uh, critical to the operation of the ship, and we will quickly notice what's wrong before it becomes a problem. But in general, we have now uh, modified our thruster setup, so we should be a little bit faster in combat. Thank you again to LB Stump for that. Now then, over to the Dapper 2. Now we've got a much more significant uh, redesign in the queue for the Dapper 2. Though part of that is going to require a lot more crew, so uh, I will probably, uh, once we've discussed what we're going to be designing, and as I start to build that off, I'm probably gonna send off the Dapper 1 to go and uh, get a couple of scraps. We will almost certainly have to crush some bases, though, in order to get the extra crew, and we will be uh, we will be following that. But if I'm fighting a, a small skirmish, especially with ships that I've fought before, we probably won't include that. But just know that the Dapper 1 will be off doing things in the background for this episode now the first bit of the change is going to probably be the most extensive and that is we're going to move all of the industry and the the non-storage i guess into the middle well except for the thrusters they'll still be on the uh on the the surface on the perimeter of the ship but this was suggested by ben and dad mechanical who felt that uh, it might be a more interesting design if we had all of the industry kind of going down the spine or at least clustered more towards the center of the ship with the storages going along the outside and i when, when that was suggested i i had a couple of ideas immediately thrust themselves into my mind that i was quite fond of so we're going to see what we can do with this additionally though we are going to be significantly increasing storage this is a suggestion by pretty much everyone we need our hauler to have a lot more space for hauling so in regards to that let's go into the design and i'll show the the first general idea for the storage because we're going to be able to fit, uh, do that fairly easily let's just grab the front of the ship and yank you up here the first and simplest uh, change to this will be to simply have quad storages rather than double storages. They won't really need to have access between themselves, but I'll probably give them some degree of access, uh, at least for the time being. Uh, we are also going to have to obviously elongate the ship quite a lot, but this is going to be the sort of central um, collection. We'll have uh, quad clusters here and there. However, I don't think we're going to have a central walkway, not in this sense, because I'm thinking to 
allow for the design that we've uh, that uh, Ben and Dad Mechanical suggested, we're in fact going to move these much further out and have a, a center of the ship uh, be much more dedicated to the industrial side and maybe even have gantries connecting these storage bays on the side of a ship more like massive cargo containers strapped to the side of the vessel rather than being inside the superstructure of the vessel in the middle and i think that's going to give a very very hauler industrial look so give me a couple of minutes to uh to play around with armor positioning and seeing what we can do and i shall bring you back before we make any further adjustments all right then now first and foremost yes it's a little bit more of an extensive redesign than i was initially intending but once the creative juices started to flow i just couldn't stop so the main upgrade is still simply storage space but now we have two separate walkways two uh, or rather four clusters of quad storage and we have a thruster cluster at the front on each side this is mostly for repositioning and slowing down we've got uh, the uh, capacitor there to run the engine room and a little bunk for the people loading the engine room now i'm thinking of trying to set up a different crew uh, a crew roll system for the dpr2 just to see how it goes because there were quite a few different suggestions with crew setups and, and specifically uh the the balance of priorities between the crew roles so it'll be interesting to see uh if i set up the uh, dpr2 to use a different set of roles which ship works the more efficiently and uh, that'll offer us a little bit of a basis of comparison moving forward but as you can see over here the incredible cost this is going to cost us a lot mostly it's going to cost us a lot of plates of which we very very much don't presently have so we need to get out there we need 4580 plates in total also quite a lot of uh, tri steel but we can purchase that and we can make the hyper calls so we need to get out into the belts and start harvesting up some materials and while all of that's going down i'm going to send up the dapper one to start uh, doing some missions and possibly cracking a base or two so that we can start filling this up with the crew that it is very soon going to need well after clearing up a bunch of wrecks and indeed creating even more we're almost ready Ready to make the first change to the uh, dapper too now I've got more or less all of the components we need we have the money to buy the rest but I want the crew in order to be able to expand out its functionality so before I send off uh, dapper one this scarab to go and destroy some bases I'm going to pick up some extra sulfur because I noticed that the uh, dapper one was a little bit shy on ammo actually and uh, that worries me a little bit though I'm going to uh, give a special shout out to Dan7559 and a couple of others actually, uh, a few people pointed this out, but Dan, uh, Dan drew my attention especially to the point that the dotted lines, now the dotted lines will pop up for all sorts of th uh, reasons, some of them will be bounties and so on and so forth, but around the asteroid field, this is the perimeter of the asteroid field. Now the thing that had completely sailed over my head the point that it, that had missed me and, and and flown off on a ten thousand year journey the 20 kilo ferrous slug in the room that uh, some random serviceman thought he could eyeball is that uh, the dotted line around the star that's an asteroid belt the whole thing is an asteroid belt i was fairly familiar with just uncovering asteroids uh, what i thought were just randomly out there but no no i clearly was crossing this boundary and i never just put two and two together so thank you very much for that dan and everyone else who mentioned that the uh, dotted line is an asteroid belt that's going to make it very easy for me to discover some more asteroids when i need them right scarab i'm gonna need you to go and uh, deal with that so you can peel off Oh, there we are. Perfect. Sulfur asteroid. Let's uh, go and park ourselves right in front of that. And we're going to start hoovering these up. Right. Scarab, can you get a... Uh, can you get eyes on that? No, I think it may get away. No, no, there we are. Perfect. Right. One of the things that I haven't been doing, or rather I'm slowly getting into the habit of doing, is actually designating this to be attacked. Because if I don't, then no attack happens, which is very sad. Are we going to engage? Are you going... Oh, you lucky so-and-so, just outside of range. All right. 
Well, now that uh, we have a look in here, we're not going to be able to store much in the way of ammo, which is good, because what I would really like to do is to store the sulfur itself. Uh, if we have a look, just make sure that it is sulfur designated. I've had to jiggle around the designation so I could fit all the plates that I needed on here. Uh, we are going to grab a, a fair bit of sulfur and then move that across to the dapper one. I think you're going to get away. We really do need to increase the Dapper One's primary thrust, its uh, forward thrust, a lot. And I've got a plan for that, uh, and indeed, uh, a couple of comments have uh, keyed me into a design choice that we're probably going to make for the thrusters in particular. Now then, Dapper One can uh, hover over here, ideally. Oop, there we are. And hopefully pick up some of these as well if they're not already selected no they have all sadly been selected now we're making ammo we'll have a couple of places to store it so it won't be too terrible but oh there we are all right get on out there please and thank you grab yourself some sulfur and load that up there we go perfect now i haven't specifically told this room to send anything out anywhere else it's to offload into the dedicated storage but it hasn't been told to offload into these storages so i'm hopeful that it won't i'll, I'll have to have to check that out also which one is sending power over there uh is either one none are currently uh well i'll have the main uh reactor help out with that then there we go. That should take care of everything. And there we are. We have got a bunch of ammo on the make. All right, we've got another sulfur asteroid just over here. So we'll send out the Dapper 2. Have them do a little bit of mining as well. And then the Dapper 1 can head straight on over. Let's park you there. And at this point, you can just grab everything else that you can hold on to. We're probably going to fill up more than this. It doesn't seem that, or at least that I've noticed, it doesn't seem to be a way to restrict a certain type of cargo. Only to designate it to be placed there. I don't seem to have a way of saying, hey, sulfur should never be allowed in there, which would be useful if I'm honest, but uh, oh well. I'll allow you to uh, grab that for now. Unfortunately, you are going to fill the entire cargo bay with it, it seems. Right, okay, well, let's head on down toward this pirate base then. Let's go... Well, actually, I should probably send the uh, Dapper 2 up to the station instead, where it can easily hand off the quest, and the Dapper 1 can clear the base. Let's find out what we've got to play with. Ooh, we've got someone probably heading in the same direction, so let's just try and cut them off and see what we can do it is more than likely the same vessel that we missed previously are we actually going to be able to take it on yes we are there we are nice and easy and again dropping down map markers pretty much everywhere we go i've had a couple of people asking how i do that it's control m uh right okay so we've got all of the turrets around here now a couple of people in the comms have been mentioning that uh, the, the pirate bases can be very different. Some of them are as we saw in the previous sector. Nice and easy, just cannons. Very easy to deal with. Not all, though. All right, let's uh, go for your bridge if I can. Uh, let's approach, and we should be able to engage. We'll slow down time a little bit and see what we can do. That should be a nice, easy fight there. And that's one gone. I believe it's gone. Yes, it is. Okay, moving on to the next straight away. Try and hit the reactor. It'll be the easier target. And while you're doing that, I will drop down a wreckage marker. Not that I really need to, honestly. Uh, Consider we're, we're definitely going to be down here at some point because this is where the base is. Uh, oh, fantastic. All of the defenders are heading out to me. That is going to make this a lot easier than it would have been otherwise. There we go, we can probably already engage. Ah, it's fantastic watching all of those ions pulsing. This isn't the most effective, uh, or rather efficient, uh, way to set up your ions. Uh, the most efficient way is literally not to use prisms at all. But, the rule of cool will quite often trump uh, efficiency. You know, it's, it's form before function for me most of the time. Most of the time. Every now and then, depending on what I've been drinking that day, it might be uh, efficiency before ethics. But uh, those are dark days and we don't talk of them very often. 
Uh, right, okay, so just cannons down here should be able to engage you well outside of your range, given it is just cannons. But what have we got here? Entirely cannons. A smaller base that I'm used to. What have we got there? Uh, lasers and cannons again. Okay, so this one should be fairly easy for us to pop. And finally, the base itself. Now, it seems to be trying to rotate itself around. I mean, this is a mobile base. It's actually got repositioning thrusters. However, given that it's rotating its uh, its cockpit away from me, I'm just going to have... Oh, uh, are we able to engage? Are we just outside of a range? We might just, just be outside of its range. Let me see if we would... Yeah, we are. All right. Well, let me uh, set that up and change the default engagement range to just be a little bit closer then. Something like that instead. And we'll save that as our... Uh, save attack default. So there we go. All right. Let's uh, make sure that we pop this. We're just going to have to bur burrow through because it would be too difficult to try and take out the, uh, the cockpit. That being said, maybe I could just cleave off the thrusters. But it would still have rotational thrust, I imagine. And it does seem to want to aim those cannons towards me so it's probably just gonna be a lot easier for me to do that there we go nice and easily done right so dapper two let's go over to you uh all the way out there pop twice and let's say hello i would very much like to turn this in we should get 30 fame there we go marvelous and that should allow us to hire significantly more crew Marvellous. There we go. Right, that is going to be enough for us to make the next big change. Now, I do have to buy a uh, load of materials here, so I'm going to do... what? Where are my crew going? Uh, are those my crew? It appears that they, they might be. Um, oh! <laughs> did, I, did I just buy the crew mid-operation? They, they were they were already doing a job, so they finished that job. I, I can respect that. Started to your finish. Well done, you. Uh, though, chop chop, because time's a wasting, and uh, your time is now wasting my time. Right, so with that said and done, let's go ahead and make this change over here, because I am going to have to buy the uh, the, the tri-steel. And uh, do we need to be a little bit closer, perhaps? Let's uh, try that. Oh, maybe this place doesn't have enough tri-steel. That would be unfortunate. Uh, let's see, do you have enough tri steel for me to purchase here? You don't have any tri steel for me to purchase here. Well, that's that's rather sad. Uh, okay, so tri steel smelter I could pick up, but I think it's going to be easier if we go and uh, find the other stations. All right, well we've got a couple of more jobs to do then, I suppose. Uh, a little bit frustrating, but not the worst uh let's go and make contract with uh sorry make contact with a solomalalia <laughs> i have no idea what i just said but i know it wasn't that place's name we'll go and say hello to them first and see if they've got tri-steel for sale never mind a helpful trader just popping by has exactly what i need to buy so i will initiate that trade right there that's 20 to try steel and you know what just for the the sake of it we'll buy an extra 20 as well so uh we can recall our ship from that that uh will work quite nicely for us let's uh, just tuck in there didn't really mean to pull you away from the ship but that also works right okay so we should now be able to make it so let's go ahead and get the first step of our design process underway okay and we've got a decent uh, healthy crew uh, here to uh, jump into the various stations so hopefully that won't take us too long but let's uh, quickly set up some routing of power so uh, this reactor down here that definitely needs to feed up all the way over there and then these react uh, or rather this uh, um, capacitor needs to feed all of that there we go that shouldn't be too terribly bad for us all right so we should see this place starting to fill up and do its jobs here and indeed there hopefully obviously we're going to need engineers running these at all times otherwise they will break and uh, we're probably going to want to uh, designate another bunk to be engineering as a consequence we'll see about that one but that does mean that we can already start working 
on the next upgrade section. We've got stupid amounts of storage now, so actually what we might want to do is go and salvage a base or two. But before we do, I think we will hail the station and pick up some more, uh, more blueprints so that we can make more manufacturing options available to us as we go. Now, I am tempted to go for the uh, processor fabrication. Now, that's going to require gold and the fissiles, or rather the enriched uranium, will require uranium. And we have got the diamond smelter as well, but that's going to require tri-steel first. Well, in that case, let's grab tri-steel first then. Okay, well, let's go and start tearing down that X base. Oh, now you are a bit of a different, uh, different ship design got three contacts around an unknown signal and you actually have a flak battery now i know flak batteries say that they are good against lasers but do you mean against ion beams because i doubt you do but let's uh let's take this one nice and slow and see how this goes we should be within range in a moment there we go engaging and that means you're going to turn around we're just going to melt the flak battery so that that can't uh be brought to bear against us pop whatever that was and uh your ship is now kind of in shambles uh are we able we're gonna have to cut all the way through and just melt the reactor aren't we that's kind of a shame honestly uh oh well it is what it is the reactor pop there we go that actually got close enough that my flag battery was engaging it but it's nice to see some new ship types uh we've got someone barreling down on us wow okay uh best turn around and face that if i were you now we may actually have an opportunity to watch the flak guns engage uh the incoming laser fire we'll see uh we're noticing flak going off nothing much happening there though not yet anyway uh are we going to be able to dig through this i mean they have gotten right on top of me here We've got another flak weapon over there, and that one's got a disruptor, which I'm a little bit more concerned about. Right, given that, let's just melt through these weapon systems as quickly as we can. Those are large weapons, too. We are trying to take down all of the weapons, but uh, not the best luck. Thankfully, that wreckage is going to act as a bit of a shield for us, which I'm very, very thankful for, actually. Very thankful for, indeed. Right, we can't engage against you. Oh, well, we've got a bit of a bit of a tricky one. Uh, let's continue to back up. Uh, whilst that's happening, we could cleave a path. Well, we could try and cleave a path straight down to the reactor if we can, but I don't think we're going to get a chance to. No, instead, let's refocus our attention on the Vindicator here. This is actually probably one of the, the more significant battles that we're going to have faced. Uh, let's try and just... Actually, you know what? Instead of going for the uh, can, well, the can of battery's almost gone, so may as well finish it off. There we go. But take out the disruptors. Those are the things I care about because those can pierce my shields. And in fact, they have them. And our capacitor is now down. Okay, so it's down to our flak battery to take out the incoming disruptor fire, which it is doing convincingly. I am very happy with this indeed. But we are definitely taking taking damage now, and uh, Ion Crystal in particular is the victim of that, right? It's about to pop, I would say, and we've yet to be able to get in there and really do any damage, which is a bit of a problem that we possibly should have gone for. Oh, there we go. It has popped, and it has shredded the armor around. Not the worst thing in the world, but... As we can see, these capacitors are no longer able to keep up and haven't been keeping up for a little while, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, right, so let's go ahead and refocus our efforts. Do we want to take out the flak battery? Yeah, let's go for the flak battery. That's probably the uh, bigger threat. Can the ship orient itself sufficiently to bring this ion prism on target? Uh, fire at what I'm aiming at. Make sure that it's going for it. Come on, just rotate around, please. Oh, that's gone. Nice. Oh, actually, my flak batteries were doing that. Uh, next up, then, go for the cannon, I suppose. Hopefully, yeah, the flak batteries are actually doing an amazing job at, at stopping that from being a problem for us. But let's try and bring the ion weapon to bear. Uh, the flak batteries are out of ammo. We can see a couple of spots where 
shells have made their, their way through. The shields are almost gone. This is uh, easily the biggest fight that the Dapper One has had to deal with. Or rather, the most, uh, most damaging fight the Dapper One has had to deal with. We have almost lost that shield system completely. Don't know if having more crew would help with this. Well, honestly, more power would definitely help with it. But uh, a couple of people were asking whether the capacitors were up to running the weapon system. For a short fight, yes, but not for any kind of prolonged engagement, which is exactly what we're fighting right now. Uh, it's going to be a bit of... Oh, wow, that went straight down the barrel there. So uh, well done you on that one. But thankfully, the flak battery are taking out the disruptor shots as they come. And there we go. Victory is ours, but at what terrible, terrible cost? Let's drop down a map marker. And I'm going to have to have the uh, Dapper 1. Uh, we, we've got a lot of repairs to make, and one of them is a crystal. I mean, the, the metal, not too much of a problem. And in fact, we're actually relatively close by this hyperjump beacon. Now, where is... The Dapper 2. Okay, in the time that the Dapper 1 is going to make over to the Hyper Jump Beacon, I'm going to have the Dapper 2 move up, mine out this Tritanium, and then we will jump over to the Dapper 1 so it can use the stores of materials that we have down here, though uh, I am a little bit shy on metal, but we do have enough diamonds to be able to replace the, the lost diamond, so we should be okay, especially as there are a bunch of wrecks around the Dapper 1 that we can go and salvage for the last little bits of uh, plates that we're going to need. Ah, nice little uh, refreshing fight there, but that is that has illustrated some, some glaring problems with the uh, energy efficiency of the Dapper 1 that we are absolutely going to have to fix before we get in, into any serious fighting. All right, with the Dapper One on its way back from the station, where we just picked up a uh, bunch of blueprints. Namely, we picked up the largest thrusters, because I feel that as this ship grows in size, it's going to need the huge thruster to get anywhere in any arbitrary, arbitrarily practical time frame. However, uh, we've got a couple of design choices. Now, currently, this is a very symmetrical design. Uh, it's also an even, symmetry on the even rather than symmetry on the odd. So it's a uh, power of two sort of symmetry. Now, I would like for the thruster cluster at the back to be centralized. In fact, I kind of like the idea of this kind of pincer all kind of tapering down to just a, a big, powerful thruster cluster right at, at the back of the craft, rather than, than going for a really blocky design. That doesn't feel particularly interesting to me. And it looks like the dapper one has made its way back here. However, the problem with that is that the engine room is a three-wide structure. And in fact, quite a lot of the things I would want to build, for example, the uh, bridge, three-wide structure again. Now, the reactor, the largest reactor, I'm not sure I want to go for the largest reactor for this ship. That's fine. That's four-wide. But there is a way that we can get around this, but we do have to basically embrace the idea that uh, if we do this, then the four-wide reactor isn't going to fit. But that is... You can just pull the mirror line. If we pull the mirror line across, it's now mirrored along the odd numbers rather than the the even numbers. So that the uh, so you'd want one, three, five, so on and so forth. And in fact, to do this, we're going to need to grab this whole section over here and uh, turn off mirror mode entirely, and cut and slide it one to the side. There we go, and then re-engage mirror mode. There we are. That gives us everything we're going to need. Now, for the thruster cluster itself, we're going to need a bigger bridge. We're going to need this bigger bridge for the simple fact that this huge thruster costs eight by itself. That is not something that we're easily going to be able to balance against the books. Uh, but I would like two of these massive thrusters here. You know what? We can pop in a little standard thruster as well, a little diddy thruster in between them. And we're also going to want turning thrusters down here in much the same way. We're going to want uh, standard thruster and then large thrusters in a block more or less like that. Now, I could do with just a single 
massive thruster there. But I feel that this ship, again, if I ever wanted to get where it's going in a reasonable time frame, we're just going to have to accept that we need it to, to be big thrusters on this. Uh, let's, well, actually, you know what? Let's uh, curve that a little bit more steeply there, just so it's got a, a bit of a nice feel to the curve. And given that, let's weave the armor a bit more. There we go. That looks a lot better. And we will take this down... Uh, should we take it all the way? Uh, yeah, let's just take it all the way down like that. And that'll, that'll be the rear of the ship. I think that is uh, perfectly fine. That being said, I could, once again, make this curve a little bit more uh, steep and, and thin it out. But I, I think that that's an unnecessary, uh, uh, an unnecessary embellishment there. I, at that point, I'm just shaping it for the sake of shaping it rather than because it looks good. Okay, so this is going to be the rear of the ship. I'm happy with that, which means we can now do away with this whole section in the design. But we now have to decide how we're going to fit things in in the middle. I would like this kind of central section to be our manufacturing area, as was uh, suggested by... Uh, who was it who, who suggested it? Um, let's have a look. Uh, ben and Dad Mechanical and also Codemaster28 also suggested something very similar, having the storages down the side. Now, I'm thinking of having the industry just a whole block dedicated to industry over here and then a tapering amount of storage heading down. All right. After more finagling than I'm comfortable admitting, we are done. And I'm, I'm fairly happy with the design here. I'm even happy with the, the kind of idea behind the design, the kind of logic behind them building it like this. This ship is no longer just some random hauler that uh, a, a commercial company would just throw together and throw out. They don't, don't really care how or whether it works well, just that it gets between A and B and, and can turn a profit. This is now a, a military supply vessel, and as such, it is going to start wanting to be more armoured. There's enough investment in this ship that losing it would represent a significant cost, even if it weren't military but would just commercially it would still be something that they would at least want to put a little bit more protection on than just paper around the hull so as a result we we're having a little bit of a, a larger amount of armor over the the aft there uh we still don't quite have the sort of firepower i would like i am kind of tempted to just uh squeeze in some uh flak turrets rear facing Again, the idea being that we're not going to be heading towards the enemy. We're going to be heading away from the enemy whenever they show up. But we'll hold off on that one for now. That's a, that's a very big redesign. Now, moving on to the bridge section. Now that we've got everything nice and centered like, I, I feel much more confident in just building in the bridge somewhere around here and just adding in blocks of armor to justify its uh, placement here. Something, well, something along these lines should do, I think. And we can have something going up like that and then curving and there we go. Now, the armor is going to make an already heavy ship even heavier, and that is a shame, but it is just something we're going to have to deal with. Now, that gives us more than enough command points to play with. We can pop the reactor in there, and that gives us uh, an awful lot to play with, actually. Uh, now, as for the lasers, I've had quite a few people suggest that we should have two. I like the idea of the lasers being on the side, but I can also agree that uh having used the ship now to salvage a bunch of big things that uh, it does take a while so we're gonna pop these in now i could have them right next to the reactor but that would force this walkway to extend out a little bit more than i would like so we'll just do something like this and we can justify that as a, uh, an opportunity to add a little bit more armor around this section in fact uh, if we imagine they're going to be firing from the back then uh, double armor there would be better and in fact we're going to add armor all the way around the reactor as well uh, we don't want any mishaps with the reactor please and thank you uh, this gives us our walkway going all the way down as well now comes the part where we want to try and work on the uh, factory all right i think this should by and large be a decent set up for us now i was a little bit uncertain about having the people movers here however 
the uh, I had a couple of comments suggesting that well, it isn't too much of a problem. It isn't it isn't uh, a, a significant enough loss of movement. As far as I understand, you get a a fairly large bonus to moving with the the mover so like uh, 50 percent or something like that but if you're moving against it you drop you lose 75 percent speed but if you're moving across it you'll only lose 25 percent speed so it's half as bad as moving through a room all right with a few finishing touches i think we're ready now i don't know how much of this is going to be in the final video i just know that it's been about an hour and a half since i started the the, the redesign proper and uh i'm certain a decent amount of that is going to end up on the cutting room floor sadly it's gonna it's gonna be a a casualty a, a bit of collateral damage in trying to get these videos to a reasonable runtime so me being the pragmatic and sensible person that i am recognizing the possibility that i will have explained something that i did and then that ends up as a, a casualty of cutting i'm going to summarize everything here and now so we've got the uh, thruster cluster at the top i'm quite happy with that general design got a reasonable amount of storage we have the ability to just continue adding more of that because of the way the uh, ship is designed i can simply elongate these limbs i can even push a little bit more room out down here as well but the uh, main bit of it is the rear thruster cluster this is a much more powerful in fact the first instances of us using the huge thrusters in the ship it's got dedicated uh, two uh, capacitors just to keep this running because I strongly suspect this is going to be very, very power hungry. We've got bunks at each uh, each capacitor specifically for the people who are going to be uh, servicing the energy consumers from those capacitors. So even some over here. The central area is now a control room, so a larger uh, bridge. We've got a tier 3 reactor i may have to upgrade this in the future we'll have a have a see of how that goes we've got two mining lasers set up to run here now understand that we're not building this ship to run at peak performance or even close to it most of the time generally speaking it will do one job at a time moving between a and b manufacturing things mining things use there'll be a little bit of overlap sometimes for example if we set off right after finishing mining we might still be doing a little bit of manufacture in travel likewise whilst mining we might start doing a little bit of manufacture as the raw resources come in but generally speaking the idea of this ship is not to be running at full bore all of the time so hopefully this reactor will allow us to do that the main point of interest is our uh, engineering i've left a conspicuous amount of space here but we can again just elongate this part of the ship if necessary to add more in the other thing is the bunks now we're going to be going with Jay Turif's suggestion of an alternate crew setup, though I've tweaked the names a little bit. Uh, they suggested four roles, one that primarily uh, focuses on operators and the, the people running the various stations, one that focuses on, on people that will haul energy from the reactors, I'm going to call them energy haulers, uh, one that focuses on the people that deliver energy from the capacitors to things that use the energy and from the reactor to something that uses the energy where that's appropriate where i'm going to call them energy suppliers and finally the general logistics staff i'm going to call them porters for this one we're going to set up four new rules and see how that works on the ship hopefully this ship has enough berths for the crew that we that we're going to need um in terms of the command crew or rather the operators we need exactly 11 people to fill all of the jobs so we're going to have two uh berths that uh, two crew quarters sorry that afford 12 beds in total in terms of the energy haulers i think eight should be enough but you know what since it'll take the same amount of space and i just don't need to fill it fully uh, let's go ahead and improve this a little bit by adding this in so we now have the ability to have up to 12 energy haulers but i think eight maybe ten would be more than enough and then the rest are uh going to be porters so we've got room over here for 24 porters 
Of course, the energy supplies, they're going to uh, they're going to bunk near the, the capacitors that they're going to service. And in the case of the reactor, uh, actually, you know what, I'm sure I can pop down a little bunk uh, right next to here as well. And since the things that are pulling from the reactor are possibly going to be pulling quite quite heavy, uh, we'll, we'll allow for that. That's it, I think. More or less. In terms of the costs to build this, they're rather excessive. Still, I think we uh, have everything we need to hand to make all of this stuff, uh, especially if we fill up the current ship with uh, with building supplies. So we're going to get onto that right now, and I will bring you back when we're ready to hit the button and create our new ship. Okay, gathering the amount of steel needed to build this much bigger problem than one might expect. Most stations don't stock steel in sufficient quantity despite me being willing to buy it. But we've got everything we need. I've had to strip down a couple of things and uh, most notably, I had to uh, strip out the tri-steel and the processes for now because well, I didn't notice that they actually required diamonds to build, which is a little bit of a problem. But let's go. There we go. We have got our well, I was going to say our newest ship. It's a, it's a, we've had the ship for a while. It's just much bigger now. It has gone through its, uh, its chrysalis stage. It was a caterpillar. It is now a butterfly or, well, actually, okay. That, that, that's not go a beautiful butterfly thing that has far too uh, many aliens connotations. But, uh, let's hope that this ship doesn't end up suffering that kind of fate. Nevertheless, we have a much bigger ship now it is going to slowly have these holes filled in over time let's have a have a look at what it looks like on the outside yeah yeah look it looks it looks a little bit patchwork uh, actually it really does look uh, quite patchwork we're going to need some time to paint this in but we are well on the way to having the sort of industrial capabilities that we're going to want to just be able to build a fleet out and about. As you can see, power is a little bit of a problem because uh, currently everyone is uh, doing uh, the logistics job. So whilst I have this, uh, oops, sorry about that, uh, whilst I have our ship limp its way over to the base wreck, uh, actually is there anything more down here? Well there's one more thing that you can collect, sure. Uh, not that you can see much thanks to no one, oh, okay look, I'm gonna need to switch out one or two of the rolls. There we go. Please get in there and just keep that running for now so that I can at least uh, gather some salvage. Is there too much more? Yeah, there's a little bit more out here. But uh, we're going to go over and we're going to grab the last little bits from the uh, the base over here, or rather salvage of the base itself, since this is the only one I haven't salvaged now in pursuit of the steel needed to build the ship. But while we cut up the base, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up the rolls. So, rather than have you sit here as I am and are about priorities, I'm going to get that done and uh, bring you back to discuss what I've done. See you in a few moments. Okay then, I have finished setting up the rolls. It took me a little while. Uh, and I've also balanced out the crew, so more or less the roles are filled based on the priority of how important the role is. So operators have got every position filled, energy haulers have got most positions filled, energy supplies have got half of the available positions filled, and then porters have got whatever's left. But to show you how I have set up the priorities, the operations, pretty much the only the operations priority is set, everything else is set to one. And in terms of weapons, it's based on how important I think that weapon is to, to be operated. And uh, so you'll see that energy weapons have a fairly high priority. It goes from nine down to about seven or six. Uh, shields are, oh, sorry, flak batteries at nine. Almost every roll has extinguisher at 10. In fact, every roll has extinguisher at 10. Also the uh, cockpit rolls as well and then down here we've got a little bit of a spread sensor array i feel is a nine because if we've got a sensor array i really do want it working all the time next up we've got the energy haulers this is a very easy one to set up pretty much everything is at one except for a single roll which is power capacitor at nine and again fire extinguisher at ten when you're only two choosing two jobs out of all of them then pretty much you could have like everything from two to six and then seven to ten is, is being merged, but uh, it's ten and nine just for the sake of it. Energy supplies is a little bit more varied, much like operators. Uh, again, all operations are set to one. And then 
The urgency at which they will supply the batteries is based on how important I think that job is. So, for example, defenses get very high. Now, you might be wondering why am I setting the priorities for things that aren't on this ship? It's because I want to set this up as a trial, and if it works, we'll see about switching it over to our combat vessels as well. So that's why you see things like shields and the various weapon systems. Again, fire extinguisher is a 10. Cockpit, obviously a 10, because if that goes down, very, very bad things. And uh, the general... Um, Isolated thrusters get a fairly low priority, whereas the engine room fairly high. Uh, general, then this is true for all of them, save porters, is gather, resource, eject, and salvage are all at ones, same all the way through. Now, the energy suppliers don't tend to supply batteries from the reactor to the capacitor. And then uh, in terms... Oh, the, the cannon factory has uh, a very high supply there. No, 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 that is uh, not... Well... I guess you can have it at about a six. All of the uh, all of the batteries for the uh, industrial needs will be middle ground. Nothing in terms of the storage bay, and then finally just a spattering of priorities over here for the mining laser tractor beam and sensor. And then finally the porter. Now the porter has probably the most jobs of anyone. Most uh, anything to do with batteries or operations is a one. Again, we're going to see that uh, fire extinguishers up, but they do have a role in combat, and that is to supply ammo, which is just a blanket nine. If something needs ammo, supply it. I'm not going to try and uh, decide which one should be getting the lion's share of the ammo. Uh, that being said, uh, if we go on down to gathering resources, ejecting resources, and salvage mining, they do have a priority. Gathering resources is more important than trying to mine because hopefully the mining laser can do that for us. And then ejecting resources, well, actually, you know, I'm going to switch those around. Ejecting resources will be the last one for them to do. Uh, in terms of supplying resources to the various stations, they've all got a priority of eight, actually. Yeah, there we go. Just making sure that that was lower than the supplying ammo to uh, our weapon systems. And finally, just after that, pretty much uh, just move things around as needed in the storage base, if indeed they needed to be moved. So hopefully that is going to work well for us. Now, with that said and done, I do need one last thing to do. Uh, or actually, I need to uh, set up some groups. So, for example, you manage this and only that. You will manage this one and same there. I need to make sure that my uh, crew are not wandering off to fulfill a job way down the other end of the ship because that would be rather silly of them. There we are. And now with that done, we set up the energy supply. So, for example these can supply only these systems i'll allow them to supply uh, these ones as well though the reactor well honestly the reactor should probably help out with these just because they can well no i shouldn't do that because the reactor is going to overcharge them uh, I guess you're going to be getting your energy from way down there, which is not particularly efficient, let's be perfectly honest. But by and large, the reactor, all it's going to do is supply the capacitors. However, it will also supply these directly. And given the proximity, I guess the reactor can supply all of our industrial needs as well. Uh, this, the uh, capacitors over on the side here, they're going to have their uh, hands full just keeping the uh, various systems here. And you know what? Given that, I may as well pull these back. And yes, I do realize that had I had mirror mode on, this job would have been significantly easier. Nevertheless, I didn't, so here we are. Uh, right, that should be just about everything done. All right, hopefully we're now going to start seeing the uh, staff keeping everything charged up as they need to. Unfortunately, we're a little bit behind with uh, getting these fully uh, uh, stocked, but hopefully we'll see those uh, getting back up on uh, back up to full charge pretty soon. Right, okay, so I think... Given how long it has taken to get all of this set up, I did have more things planned that I wanted to do, including building some new ships. But uh, this has been a very, very long recording session, several hours at this point. I hope you have enjoyed it. I tried to include a little bit more of the building, though, you know, a smattering of combat here and there. But uh, I have received quite a few comments saying that people would really like to see more of the building or at least get more uh, of my commentary on the 
the uh, decisions that went into deciding why I built things a certain way or, or why I lay uh, things out with certain proximities, that sort of thing. So do let me know if this has scratched that particular itch for you. But that really is all we have time for for today. Nevertheless, I really do hope you enjoyed today's episode. Build Heavy, though it was, offered a little bit more of a window into the design process, or at least my design process when it comes to putting these ships together. I hope that's been helpful for those of you who are asking for it. And if you are looking forward to a little bit more combat in the future, then do be aware that in the next episode, we will almost certainly be spending most of it fighting. We're going to have to design the new ships, but then the rest of it will be spent trying to learn how to command a fleet in combat and, you know, just crash testing. Well, hopefully not crash, but testing the uh, new ship designs as well. We'll almost certainly be uh, making our way to a new sector as well but that is really it from me so as ever please do leave a like if you liked and sub if you haven't already and i will catch you in the next one but until then do take care everyone <laughs>